Hello, everybody. My name is Juan Carlos, and welcome to OCR Unedited, where we highlight amazing coaches, athletes, and everyday people in the OCR trail communities for unscripted and unedited conversations. Today, I have the honor of speaking with uh, the one and only, now, it's Dominic Maurice. That's good. Right? <laughs> of Platinum Rig, everybody. Hey, thank you so much for joining me on the pack, on the podcast today. It's, uh, I'm excited to chat with you today, Dom. My pleasure. So, yeah, buddy. And uh, so, you know what? It would be fantastic if you would just start by telling us a little bit about you, and yourself, and Platinum Rig. No problem. We started the company uh, eight years ago. Actually, I was building um, lowriders and stuff like that, modifying a frame and a suspension. And my girlfriend at that time wanted to start a. a like we're starting to do CrossFit and our friend was starting a gym. So, so they asked me to build a rig there. So we build one there. We build, we start working with Spartan um, in Canada. So, so I'll start there. Uh, we actually, the first weekend we went to Spartan, we, we spread 8,000 flyer in the, in the parking lot of our company and, yeah. and, and never stopped from, from that day. So it exploded and went where you guys all know where we are now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are huge. <laughs> yeah. Busy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. So a lot of race, a lot of challenge, a lot of fun and nice customers. So, so we're happy. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I started uh, and I came across my first platinum rig uh, at a race and I couldn't finish it. Where? <laughs> it was, um, I believe it was, I, th I think my first one was B Battle Frog. Okay, yeah. They were hard. <laughs> oh my God, buddy, you made it so hard. I, 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 think I, I think I was in tears. I couldn't finish it. And this is when I started in OCR. And so I yeah. went and trained and trained and then I managed to do it. But you have a unique way of just creating these rigs uh, at various levels of difficulty yeah. uh, for people just, you know, and, you know, and I said this before and I said it to many people and I said it to John and Ian that you have this thing about you when you're building a rig that you have a smile on your face. <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen. It's one of those smiles that make you wonder what is this guy have in store for us? Yeah, that's the good thing about this obstacle. It's always different, and th there's even some races we set up the rig like like the night before. Yeah, and and when the race goes, everybody start running, and we went back and changed the rig while <laughs> they were running. So so they all study the rig, and they were think they're ready. And when they come back after half an hour, like oh, it changed. It changed for half <laughs> since the beginning of the race. So yeah. And you're also known for changing the, 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 not the format, but changing the rig depending on, I guess, how fast people are getting through. Like, there's times where I've raced and I've seen you at the end when I finish. I would watch and I would see you changing things about a, on, on the rig because it's maybe a little too easy for people and they're getting through too easy. So you have a way or you have this thing about going in Changing it around and surprising people. Yeah. Still, that smile on your face. Yeah. <laughs> we love it. Yeah. I don't I don't know what the smile is all about. Maybe you just like it when people fail because you know why it's like you no, got no. No, no, we want people to rethink their training. <laughs> Go back to the drawing boards and <laughs> Yeah. You know, a funny thing before we continue but there was one time i think it was uh noram the, the last one uh, at vermont and you were there and i remember i approached you and and you had a, once again a smile on your face you were working on the rig and i asked you hey listen so what's happening here and you just gave me a smile and you said i'll see you tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you'll know when you do it <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you left me scratching my head. It's like, oh Jesus, no! Oh my God, this guy's gonna kill us. 
Yeah, lots of potential. <laughs> hey, for the past few years, uh, Platinum Rig has been putting on races with a unique format in comparison to other <clears throat> to other OCR uh, races. Can you talk about the different race formats that you have? Yeah, we actually for the last uh, four years at our shop, we did uh, like in the spring. We bring like all the new obstacle and all the obstacle that we have at our shop. We put it in the parking lot and we make it like a two two hundred meter, like hundred meter, uh, like go and a hundred meter back, and uh, we put like 40, 45 obstacle in this two hundred meters. So it's super packed, but you can you can come like all over the weekend. There's competition. There's a team event. There's a solo. There's as many laps as you can do in one hour. Uh, you can come and train with the trainer uh, and you can come uh, like the free training on the, on the Friday. You can just try the obstacle uh, as much as you want. And uh, so that's, that's the first thing we did for uh, four years. And now we push the uh, level up a little bit. We, we did a 800 meter with over 40 obstacle and uh it's like a like a racetrack that you go around yeah this one is a team event teams of four at least one female and this one the obstacle change like the old 24 hours so so on the 10 minutes every obstacle are allowed to change not a like not every minute just on a multiple of 10 Yes. So let's say uh, noon and 10 minutes or 20 or 30. So a lot of obviously you can do like two track, uh, two, two lap uh, in a row. And the first one is different than the second one because obstacle change, some open, some close. So sometimes it's more agility, sometimes it's more strength, sometimes more speed. Yeah. So, so over the 24 hours, there's a lot of different way you can run that track. And, and so you have to think which which racer you want to send there's a tower in the middle you can watch us like this is close this is open this is close so we say we should send her or we should send him so gain time and and you never get stuck so if you can't do an obstacle you can wait maybe it's gonna close soon maybe not yeah you can retry or you can run back on the track and send another racer so you're never stuck you can always run and it's a lot of fun and team events are super fun because there's a like massive energy and and you see all the scoring is a is on a huge board uh, that you write by hand so, so everybody can see who's in front who's behind uh, yeah. so yeah there's we have two laps to catch to do uh, to <laughs> gain another uh, position so it's a lot of fun so this is the one just for the audience. So this is the this race that you're talking about. This event is a 24 hour platinum rig event that was held earlier this year, but because of COVID, you postponed it to October. Yeah, we did it last year in October. We yeah. were supposed to redo it in June, and it was postponed to uh, October. Because we, we chose uh, New York as, as venue and New York was really bad in yeah. June. So yeah. we're thinking, pushing somewhere around New York in, in, uh, in October, still not really good. We were thinking to go to Florida before Florida went really bad too. <laughs> so we were thinking to add, <laughs> to go to Florida in, in like January or, or February and it, it's really not good at all there so, so i know so we just yeah push so it to next year. for next year yeah actually we're gonna release uh in, in a few days but it's gonna be in august next year yeah i think and, it's probably the safest thing to do yeah and, and it's, it's a really tight like like all the racers live together they have like a 10 by 10 square they live in yeah. so, uh, for a, for a pandemic, it's like the best recipient to fail. So, <laughs> so it's not a good idea. <laughs> no, but the one in Can the one here in Canada in Montreal in October, the Canadian one, the twenty four hours. Uh, that's the same format. It's a twenty four hours. You've got a group of. This is a team event. Yeah, like we're talking about, and I guess everybody has to do. Everybody in the team has to do at least 30% of the leg 20. work, 20% of the leg 20% of the lap. Of the lap. 
Yeah, so if one guy or one female does 19.999, the team is disqualified. Oh, <laughs> did you hear that, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so you, you got to keep track of uh, how many laps you did. Everybody calculate your stuff. And so you got to stay sharp and think. There's a lot of planning in, in that race. Uh, and I'm wondering. If I go do it, do I do I have to run with my marker or with my pencil? Because I'm thinking that at the end, as soon as I finish that lap, there, there's a board that I have to go write. Yeah, the the, the pen are there, so you can <laughs> take grab there. one, write your name, your your jersey number, <laughs> and so you can always go back and calculate the, who did how many. And, and you got a pen there hanging by a string. <laughs> no, they're they're loose. <laughs> yeah. I'm participating in that one. And I was asking John and uh, John Loney and uh, Ian if they're going to do it. And I think they said yes. Yeah, they they came last year. Yeah, they did it last year. This is the one where John banged his head. Yeah. (laughs) Or obstacle or strong. (laughs) Yeah, he got a concussion. (laughs) Yeah. Well, he's good now. (laughs) Yeah, he's great. He's good. He's good. He's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I can't wait to do it because I know I'm participating on it. Uh, I'm going to be doing it with David Claxton and uh, a few other people. Nice. So I can't wait to do it. I, I heard so much about it last year, uh, but I can't wait to do it. But this one in Canada in October is also going to be postponed uh, yeah? for, June, for June next year. Oh, so then I don't have to worry. No, you still have time to train. And <laughs> 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 yeah, because it's, it's still not good enough for... Uh, it's too tight of an event. Everybody's too close together. Uh, everybody lives in the same place, like I said. And I know. And, and it's it's not a good idea. Not okay. not not at that time. So so it's gonna be June next year. Okay. And as a site for like a race site, we have three options that we're looking. So there's okay. the old place we went last time, like the racetrack. Yeah. So you- there's a permanent site that we're also looking at. And the other option is uh, right by the shop, by the highway. There's a nice field that everybody can see and watch. And oh, so, nice! So it's one of these three. Yeah. Oh, look yeah, at that! We're gonna make an announcement uh, really soon. Yeah. So <laughs> you you already did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not live. <laughs> so let me ask you: How do you feel about being that you're postponing this? I mean, you're postponing it. I mean, we're in August. Uh, how do you feel about Spartan holding their races? Doesn't it make you also want to hold, you know, have yours? Like a Spartan, you can, you can take your, your, you can start the race and you go run in the woods and there's plenty of space. Yeah. Okay. But our event is, is you Very like tight. all the teams are on 800 meter. Uh, it's, it's it's so tight everybody's staying together at the like the really point uh, there's everybody's close together so uh, i don't want to be like the pain in the ass and, and telling people and back no, up, I know back what you up mean, and yeah. so, so it's not gonna be fun and yeah and it probably wouldn't work your, your race format wouldn't work because everybody's so tight together yeah. They sleep in the in the tent, four people uh, in a ten by ten uh, square. So even if we do ten by twenty, it's still it's still not still enough. Too close. <laughs> still too close. Uh, yeah, not a good recipe in a pandemic. So. No, it's true, and I totally agree. So, how quickly did you realize you would need to cancel your races, your race season due to COVID nineteen? I mean, was it was it something that you decided all at once or was it gradually through the season that you started to notice, okay, this pandemic is a lot worse than we think it is, so I have to postpone things. We thought it was going to be like, how oh, should I say that? Say like it, end, end, you like. End, end all better. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, things got so, like, out of control and like in the states like New York and Florida were the two places we pick and the two worst places in the state. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. So we, we 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 were hoping like really bad that it will come down and yeah. yeah. So, 
never happened. So. Yeah, yeah. So there wasn't a third location, a good location. It was just those two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, three. Yeah, actually, even, even if only one. New York. <laughs> even if only one guy show up with COVID, <laughs> like half of the of the athletes will be contaminated <laughs> after four hours. <laughs> so. You know what? That's probably true. And yeah, the, the so. thing about what you're doing is probably yeah. And I said it before, it's the safest thing, I guess, for you and, and your staff, yourself, yeah. families that are going to probably be there and, and everybody involved, participants and athletes, you know, it's, it, I think it's the safest thing for you to do as well, right? And you said uh, Spartan and stuff like that. They, they have an obstacle and they have like 800 meter, a kilometer before they have another obstacle. So you get and wash your hands and uh, yeah and run for for five ten minutes but at our race you'll you'll have to wash your hands every 20 <laughs> seconds because there's an obstacle where <laughs> you, you get off you run 20 seconds there's another obstacle so so yeah so wait, going back to your event so you're saying that it are for every loop how many obstacles are for every lap? From zero to 45. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Did you hear that, people? You better get, you better get started in your training, in your grip training, because well, but, you can only imagine are, all grip strength. Really. No, no, no. There's, they're they're, they're at, at a level that you can do it, like, almost forever. So. Yeah. So, okay. so the rig are easier. Uh, and there's no, there's no like five rig or super long rig or stuff like that. It's not a rig competition. It's, it's, but there's something about with you because you're still smiling. No, no, but and I'm thinking <laughs> you have something up your sleeve that it's like one of those surprise rigs that you're just gonna uncover halfway no, or at the end. No, let's say we do something a bit harder. It's gonna it's it's not gonna be open for an hour. It's gonna be open for ten minutes just to. Laugh Just a little to bit, tease but, uh, people. yeah, tease people, and <laughs> so you never get stuck in that race. Let's say you're stuck, you can always run, run backtrack and backtrack and send another racer. So, so there's always a way out, and so, so you don't, you're not like the the guy who, who's slowing down the team and yeah. blocking the team. And so, there's always a way. So, I mean, here's another question. So, when you had this event last year i mean everybody talked so highly of it it was a great event everybody loved it did you ever um come across a point where a specific a particular obstacle rig let's say uh started to get congested with people it just got it was a it was a difficult uh, obstacle to do the good thing is is let's say there's a con congestion or or it's too hard or something we have the option to close it. Let's say after five minutes, it gets packed of people. Uh, we only have to wait five minutes and close the obstacle on the next 10 minutes. So, so we can always close one, reopen, change it. We have like a free, <laughs> like, we're free to do whatever we want because it, it could change yeah. all the time. So. So when people are failing, what do you tell them? Okay, people, you're failing too much, too, too much here. Okay, I'm gonna close it. Keep on going. <laughs> oh, it doesn't happen. It's, it's not happening because, because like I told you, there, the level is uh, is lower. So, so there's a lot to do, but yeah. there, most of them are are easy, and we're not gonna do like five rigs that are hard. Yeah, uh, like back to back. So you have wall, tunnel, cargo net, stuff that you can do for three days. Man. So Yeah, and like I said before, I mean, yeah. talking with a lot of the, the athletes, uh, friends that did it, uh, they, they, they speak highly of yeah. uh, this event, and I can't wait to do it. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's um, a lot of fun. Whenever you are building for at, at rigs at your races or at races, you're very secretive about what the rig will look like. Um, you, you tend to change them a little. Is it because you're told to do that or no. you just do it because you have like an idea it. of how you want it to look like? No, the lo usually the longer the race are, uh, the harder we made it. So let's say you do an ultra beast, that's going to be pretty hard. But in a sprint, uh, we try to please the people and 
give them more uh, more chances to, to to do it. No, no, it's true. And you know, like I said before, and I say it again, people do love um, platinum rig uh, or your rigs. Uh, so there's just something unique about it, and it's. And it's weird not to have a platinum rig at a race here in Canada. It's yeah. weird to go to a race and not see platinum rig. Okay. For me, that's that'll true. be weird because it's, it's what I started with doing and it's what I've seen all throughout my, my race career. And so it's like, you know, I always plan on seeing uh, a platinum rig rig. Um, one of your yeah, rigs. The, the, bus the busiest uh, year we did, I think 128 event. In a year, yeah, wow. the the Battle Frog, the Savage Race, the Strong Viking in Europe, the uh, strongest, uh, uh, toughest uh, Spartan race, uh, plus all the CrossFit event because we rent the uh, rigs for a CrossFit event as well. Yeah. So, 128 was the biggest year we did. Oh my God! Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Savage uh, Savage Race now. Do you participate in there and, and bring in your rigs at, uh, at certain locations or are they, is Platinum Rig, uh, are you in partners with Savage Race? No, we actually, we, we sold the rig to a uh, Savage Race. Gotcha. We drove down to, uh, was it near Tampa, the, the, the day we did the delivery. We went to Tampa event. We uh, showed them how to put it together, take it yeah. down. And uh, they set it up themselves. And in Chicago, for Savage Ways, we went there and delivered the uh, the tree hugger. Yeah. That is the uh, the samurai here. Yeah. So we, I drove there, showed them how the L works, and after the like like same thing for toughest and uh, strong biking, in oh, uh, nice. in Europe, we went there, give them their training, and after they go, uh, they use so it as they want. If you must be proud and honored to have your rigs at other race locations, whether it be in the States or whether it be abroad in Europe. Oh, that must sure. be an amazing thing for you. For sure. Yeah, yeah. we're really so, happy. And what's the feedback like? Oh, people love it for sure. They love it because mainly because it's, it's always different. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you go to a race, like 99% of the, the obstacle you like you race 10 times and it's 10 times the same. So people, they go to the event and there's one, one obstacle they want to see is the platinum ring. I was going to be, do I have chances? How should I do it? And it's always exciting. And so, so. Oh, that's awesome. No, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's truly awesome. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff like in the 24 hours, a lot of obstacles are changing. Sometimes the cargo net you go over, sometimes you go under, uh, yeah. the walls or walls that we design, they can be six different ways with the same walls and the same legs. So we, sometimes it's a six feet wall. Sometimes it's an inverted wall. Sometimes uh, you go sideways. Sometimes uh, it's an eight foot wall. Sometimes it's an over under, uh, it changes. So, <laughs> so through the night, you'll see all the version <laughs> of a lot of stuff. So. So Dom, if I want a rig in my backyard, how do I about, how do I go about it in getting one? I usually you let me know uh, if you have kids, how tall or old are they, uh, which sport they like, uh, what do you want to train for? Same thing for your wife. Uh, you let me know the, the space that you have, and I'm gonna draw something for you and and change, modify until you're happy, and after that. We'll work uh, the price and uh, we can do install. We just ship. Sometimes we just, uh, people come and pick it up. So that's awesome. Yeah. There's, it was crazy popular this, like, even today or like, every, everything's top, gym's top. So everybody want to rig in their backyard. And people that were doing gymnastics, they were ordering a uh, rig yeah. with rings, parallel bars, stuff like that. So, so try to please the family and keep the kids in shape. And yeah. But, so. and, and it's keeping you busy. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, because the gym, so, the gym went super slow, like everything was canceled or yeah. plus the event as well. So, but this, yeah, we were super busy because of that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, it, it is a good problem to have, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, we had our, our four kids uh, in February, just before COVID. So it gave me some time to be home because I had all my weekend. It's the first year I have weekend off since eight years. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Dom, congratulations, buddy. Thanks, thanks. So, I had time to put grass on my uh, <laughs> at my house. We're, we're there for four years and we're still on the sand. <laughs> so, I had time to do the landscaping. And so, yeah, hey, that's listen, some good I side. agree with you. I agree with you. I have that same problem and I'm loving it. I have all this time with the family. I get to be home and I yeah. find myself out in the gar gardening you know cutting the lawn you know, <laughs> you know growing vegetables and everything it seems to be now a part of my uh oh, yeah. new life yeah exactly it's a new it's, it's it feels like a new life here it's like uh i got a new job oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was given to me by the wife <laughs> that's good <laughs> <laughs> so listen going back to covid how has COVID impacted you personally and how has it impacted your business? Uh, business, uh, like I said, I like every, like we only have one event this year and we booked it like two days ago. <laughs> so everything was canceled. Some weekend we had like three, three events, two events uh, yeah. in the same weekend and yeah, they were all canceled. Jim, Gym went super slow, but we kept we kept doing a uh, scroll because we do scroll like rigs, foldable like rigs that fold, and you can bring it up when you want to play basketball or some other stuff. So That's nice. yeah, so we we still doing school, uh, cities, our military, we still doing that, and yeah, a lot, a ton of uh, like I call that the uh, home gym, like garage gym. Yeah. basement backyard a lot so oh man and personally but uh, free weekend so that's the best <laughs> <laughs> but we you're missed those loving, races you're, you're loving your free weekends which is oh yeah a smile on your face <laughs> oh yeah like usually yeah. from from eight like late april till uh like ocr world champion ocr world championship there's like almost no weekend now so Oh, wow. That's busy. That's Woo. seven days a week. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> it's long, long summer, so. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. like I said, it's a good problem to have. Oh, yeah, for sure. So hey, talk to me about your Team Platinum Rig athletes. Yes. I mean, I, I had two of them recently, um, John Loney and Ian St. Laurent. So talk to me about them and then um, I... Uh, you, uh, how many how many athletes do you have in your team? Uh, I'm not sure, like like a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't calculate them, but uh, yeah, anybody we know. <laughs> but you know uh, Jesse Bruce. Yes, Jesse Bruce, uh, and we choose them because they're good, but only not only because they race. Uh, they're they're. Like they have good results, they have to be like uh, an example to follow, and it's really important for us. So, so Jesse Bruce is, is like <laughs> somebody we're really proud of, and Samuel Lebert as well. Super strong uh, with your racer. Yes, I had him here recently, and yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah Samuel Lebert. Uh, we have people that are doing CrossFit as well. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, how is that? It's good, but she, the, she's competing in, she's around 40, so she's competing oh. with the older people, but she's <laughs> super strong. And well, That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where do I sign up? <laughs> <laughs> send, yeah, your, uh, send us an email. <laughs> <laughs> I was sure but to yeah. <laughs> Who else? We have uh, yeah. Do you have uh, Benjamin? Yeah, Benjamin as well, yeah. but he uh, he's in the military, so uh, that's right. Yeah, he went to do a tour, a few tours, so he was out of racing uh, season. Yeah, but it, it was it was back and ready for this summer, but summer COVID came. <laughs> yeah. <He> went back. 
No, <laughs> uh, he's still here. He's work. He's still in the military, but uh, he's he's working here now. So but that's good. No, he's he he is just an amazing athlete. Yeah, uh, um, strong. Yeah, very very good, uh, very good person, um, athlete. Looking into the future, what can we expect from Platinum Rig? A new obstacle, as usual. Where oh. I have some, I have some new ones that are already draw and they're ready to be released this year. But uh, you don't have any diagrams you can put up. <laughs> it's one of those top secrets, eh? Oh, okay. Actually, I understand. I understand. You don't want to say anything. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> for those that are listening he just showed me a couple of papers <laughs> so don't worry i mean uh, if you can make pause uh, maybe you'll <laughs> I, I'm, uh, I, there's I no detail it, so yeah no but i take it that in the future you you'll yeah. you'll make this aware and uh you make us aware and you'll let us know it's gonna be at the 24 for sure oh yeah <sighs> can't wait i can't yeah. wait. Uh, only at the 24 nowhere else Oh, we'll see. But for now, for sure, at the 24 hour. But yeah. So is there anything else uh, you would like to mention? Maybe any shout outs, any uh, to your sponsors or anything? <laughs> Yourself? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'll say one thing. <laughs> I'm going to say thanks to my girlfriend, too. <laughs> like to be by my side and... <laughs> coming to all the races and packing everything and unpacking with the four kids and it's so much work and so much uh yeah it's a hard life to follow and uh yeah i'll say thanks to her you know that's a good one i like that one you know never forget to thank the girlfriend or the wife oh yeah 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 not easy <laughs> not easy here's a question for you before uh before we end this um what are you some of your best memorable races Uh, there's a lot. <laughs> but what, what's one that, that I race or that, uh, that we bought a rig to? Uh, doesn't matter. Let's do both. <laughs> Let's do both. <laughs> Actually, the best finish I had in my life of a race was toughest in uh, Oslo in Norway, okay. where they have the, they have the, the ski jump. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. jump uh, I don't know what I call that, but the end of the race is is on that ski jump so you have to climb that and and when you get up there you get all the view of oslo and everything is isn't it's, that it's the amazing. one isn't that the one that has like a cargo net on on, on the yeah. ground so that way yeah. you can get a good grip yeah. yeah oh my god yeah isn't that a red bull uh event i'm not sure but this one was uh, from toughest okay okay yeah okay but I don't know if Red Bull are, is going there or, but they have a, like the, the ending of that race was amazing. How long did it take you to get to the top? Oh, it's not that long. It's just a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I believe you. No, it's, it's not that long. <laughs> I've seen videos, buddy. It, it doesn't seem short. Okay. So <laughs> oh, wow. like it's nothing. So well, you don't, you don't. You don't go to the very top. You go to the like the first, like the Achoo. first flat. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! But uh, but the view and it's it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And race the uh, like some battle frog that we did were epic. Yeah, uh, we had rigs there. Uh, OCO World Championship the first year uh, was something uh, yeah special. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I would have thought one of your best memories would be, I guess, uh, at the Worlds or Noram. Yeah, but the like the, the first the first world at Blue Mountain. No, in oh, Pas Ohio. Pasadena, Ohio. Yes, sorry. Yeah, Ohio. Okay. Yeah. Also, you were part of that. Yeah, the first from the first year. How was it? That was Where, good. You know, people coming. To your obstacle and uh, yeah, the, actually, actually, this this year we made the rig. Like people were allowed to to try the obstacle on the Friday and stuff like that. So, so, so the Friday night, the rig was like barely impossible to go through. It was so hard. Like you know, Siri England 
from uh, from Europe was like almost the only person to go to. People were practicing, <laughs> failing, practicing, failing, failing. They were all calling uh, the race director. Like, did they have to change that? Yeah, like everybody's gonna fail there. And I keep telling him it's not gonna be like that. But he wasn't able to tell the people, so everybody was panicking, <laughs> having problems to sleep, and <laughs> and on race day on Saturday it was. It was hard, but doable, like really doable. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. God. Big panic, but lots of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it, um, so if people are looking to find out more about you uh, or Platinum Rig, um, where should they go? How can they find you? I can uh, follow me on uh, Facebook on, uh, or like Platinum Rig Dom, Dominic Maurice, or they can uh, go on uh, Instagram. There's a lot of picture of uh, all the project we do, the race, the event we yeah. do. So a lot of stuff there. Platinum breakdown. Oh, yeah, and for everybody, listen. If you're having problems, just uh, send, uh, drop a comment, and uh, I'll guide you, or I'll pass along the message to Dom, which he'll be tagged on, and he'll see it as well. You know, buddy, it's been a pleasure uh, speaking with you today. I look forward to running into you to, you know running into your rigs in the next few races. Um, yeah. Maybe not this year, but definitely next year. Yeah, anytime. I, I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and before we end, I was looking for a, a Platinum Rig shirt, but this is the only thing I can find because I realized that I don't have one of those. <laughs> I'm, I have to, I'm going to have to request one. Send you an email. Yeah, email me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy, listen. You know, it was truly an honor, a pleasure. I've been wanting to do this with you. Uh, thank you for making the time to come on uh, OCR and Edited uh, podcast and uh, chatting with me and uh, getting the word out. My pleasure, anytime. Okay, buddy. <laughs> Everybody, um, if you have any questions, please drop us a comment and I'll be make sure that uh, Dom gets it. Other than that, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, Dom, thank you. And everybody, have a good day. Yeah, you do.